technical difficulty day, huh? So it goes sometimes. Um, for years, I taught in the social work school at the University of Southern California, part-time gig while I was doing my main job. Um, and I taught public policy there to social work graduate students. And uh, one of my, I found myself um, hearing all the time in the classroom from these, you know, 23, 24, or 25 year old uh, young folks, the word like. Like, you know, like, 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 you know, like, you know, you know, like. Every other word, every tenth word, every fifth word was like. And, and I, it just really like put me in touch with like how much that word gets used out there, particularly among young folks, um, and particularly I notice among women. And uh, I, 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 stud I, just, I decided to explore this, this, this phenomenon. Why is it that people, that particularly young people say like, like why is it that like everybody says like, like all the time? Well, it turns out that there's a, uh, there's been science about this, believe it or not. Can you believe it? Um, linguistic analysis has been applied to this phenomenon. And it's part of a category of linguistic phenomenon referred to as hedging. Hedging is when you want to sound like you fit in with everybody else. And you don't want to stick up and stick out like you're somebody special or you're different than other people. You want to fit in. You want to sound like somebody who's just a regular, like, regular, like, person, okay? So that's why people do it, is because they're trying to fit in and be like others and not uh, act special so that other people will accept them. Because, and then, you know, this is something young people wrestle with, right? You want to fit in. Okay, Zelda. Lennox, do you guys find yourself ever saying the word like? Sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, like, then you like, need to say like. Well, I, think about this, you guys. I, the, the good news is that you're, you're young enough and secure in who you are enough right now that you don't need to say like. But maybe later on you'll start feeling like you have to say it because you want to fit in and be like other people, and not stick out and be, act like you're special. So think about it before you use the word like. Yeah? So it's just a thing. It's a thing. Uh, so what I learned, what, I, what did I, I'm sorry? Yeah, you know. I don't know. You know? <laughs> you know? There are all, yeah. <laughs> exactly. These hedging terms are mysterious to people who, for whom English is not their first language. It's, it's weird. You know, why are people saying, well, it, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But it does make a certain kind of sense because of, you know, the way we relate to each other in society and how people feel secure or insecure in social situations. But there are all sorts of other forms of hedging, like you say, saying, um, you, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That, um, another one out there is, see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? You'll hear that. Yeah. There's all, and then there are different cultural subcategories of culture that use different forms of hedging. Same thing, different words. Anyway, so I've got this group of 24 year olds who are becoming professionals, right? And and so I found myself uh, doing a ritual at the beginning of every class that I taught there. Early on, first couple of sessions, I would say, we're, I, I would like to, like, uh, like to uh, introduce a, a, a little moment of ceremony with you. And I go, how many of you use the word like a lot? And they smiled and pretty much everybody stuck up their hands. And I go, well, uh, friends, you have just started social work graduate school. You are now, as of today, 
first day of class at the University of Southern California Graduate School, professional school of, 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 of social work. You're, you're going to be therapists. You're going to be leaders. You're going to be activists. And you need to sound like you take yourselves seriously so that other people will take you seriously because they need to take you seriously in order for you to be useful to them. So I would like to take now a moment of silence, my dear friends, and celebrate all the years that you spent saying the word like. And just remember your youth and how wonderful it was to be young and without a lot of responsibility wasn't that wonderful? We'll take a moment to, to grieve the loss of that time, and at the same time to embrace life without the word like being used every five words. And they would smile and sit there, and I'd say, let's close our eyes and have a moment of silence to, to mark this moment of you becoming professionals, grown-ups who Act like others should treat you seriously. We're not afraid to stand out and be heard and be different and speak with seriousness and uh, let go of this hedging of the word like. All sorts of forms of this, yes. Uh, we, we heard it uh, a while back uh, when uh, uh, State of the Union and then uh, after Biden's speech, then the, there was the, uh, the Republican response, which was from uh, Senator Katie Britt of, uh, Alabama, of uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Alabama. Anyway, that was classic. Uh, because here's this United States Senator, right? In the background is a kitchen. So she's posing as a housewife, right? United States Senator, posing as a just a, a meek housewife. And she was speaking in uh, hedging language, a special kind of hedging la language called fundamentalist baby voice, <laughs> right? And it is a cultural thing in that world, high-pitched, submissive-sounding hedging. It's hedging. So here's this woman who is a United States senator. U.S. Senator speaking in fundamentalist baby voice in a spotless kitchen that she could not possibly be using uh, these days because she's a United States Senator. Anyway, uh, mind-boggling, really. But it's, uh, there's a whole culture of this in evangelical and fundamentalist Christianity, and it takes different forms. One of them is fundy baby voice of women who are expected to talk this way. But um, everybody, men and women and otherwise included, also there's, there's this culture. Uh, one, one comedian uh, made kind of merciless fun of it. He calls it evangelical Tourette's. Tourette syndrome, you know, where you can't help but say, you know, make these utterances, right? It's a tough thing. So it's, it's sort of a mean kind of a, a description. But what you find in... In, uh, in evangelical churches, when they pray in church or any kind of public setting, they use the word just a lot. Just, we pray, Lord, we just ask you, we just beseech you, we just, 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 just every other word is just, right? J-S-T, no U in it, right? It is evangelical hedging in front of God, right? Oh, we're submissive, we're sinners, we're terrible, you know, just please, just, you know, just be nice just to us, just, right? Tourette's, right? A certain kind of Tourette's. Anyway, um, I, I was subjected to this a lot when I worked at USC because, you know, we're the Office of Religious Life and three quarters of the groups were evangelical clubs, student clubs, and so whenever I would go to their meetings or their world, I would hear just, 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 just a lot, yeah? Like was in there too in the prayers. Wow. Meanwhile, here's Jesus. What does Jesus have to say about this? Very interesting. Again, you have heard that it was said to the men of old, 
You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is footstool, it's his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, who is God. Uh, and do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Anybody dye their hair? Um, you do? You're dyeing your hair? You're dyeing your hair? Already? Serious? Whoa, dude, really? That's fun. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> let what you say be... Si Jesus says, let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. Kind of great, huh? He's saying... Don't swear at all. Don't make oaths that involve divinity. Forget it. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. Jesus was against hedging. This is, a, this is, a, uh, this is from the Sermon on the Mount. He's saying, give it up. Give up this just, just, just business. Give up this like, like, like business. Just say yes, just say no, say what you mean, say it out loud, <clears throat> be serious. And by the way, you can be serious even when you're funny. Have you noticed that some of the best comedians never smile or laugh? Mark Twain, probably the funniest American in the history of the country, never smiled or laughed. He had a big bushy mustache, and he would talk like this and tell jokes, and everybody would be screaming and howling with laughter when he's up there. Yeah, crazy guy saying crazy stuff. Like this. Yeah. Serious humor. <laughs> Some of the best comedians are like that. Uh, and then some of the most uh, serious looking people aren't serious at all. We don't even need to name names about that, do we? Yeah. People who scowl all the time and talk like they're serious. But then you listen, you go, no, no, it's not there. It's not happening. Uh, swearing. Okay, you guys know any swear words? La, 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 don't say them, don't say them. No, 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 no. Yeah, and, it, and, and, and it's in our culture, right? So you got, you know, you, you swear in, right? You swear in people in court. They make an oath. They swear. Put their hand on the Bible or something, and they swear. Now there's something to it. There is something to that. It's like when you say out loud what you're going to do, uh, it is... It, there's science behind this too. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna, uh, Tiff, do you mind coming up for a moment? Yes, you. You. Uh, with which hand will you be marking your ballot in the November election? May love guide your hand to vote for the common good. Can you spread that around? Do it all with each other if you don't mind. Shake each other's hand. With which hand will you be voting in the upcoming election? <laughs> May love guide your hand to vote for the common good. Spread that around. <laughs> okay, what's so bloody funny? <laughs> That's great. It is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's something to this. So this is a ritual. Of, I take credit for this, all right? Um, I started this some years back, and it has spread around the country. So people are doing it in churches and in other contexts. 
doing this little ritual. Now, there's science behind this because when you say you'll do something to somebody else like this, with eyes to eye, and you say you're gonna do something, and then you shake their hand, that's even more powerful, or you get them to sign their name, right? Signing, why do people sign anything? Why? <clears throat> it's kind of weird when you think about it, especially now that everything's you know, online. We still make people sign stuff online, which is weird, but we still do it. <clears throat> why? Because if you physically, physically, physically sign something that you have agreed to do, it is more likely that you will do this, and we have this as a matter of the social aid science. Social science has shown that that is the case, right? You promise to do something to another person, not just to yourself, but to someone else, bingo. Uh, and that is why at this season of the year, when we go door to door, knocking on doors, and ask people if they're gonna vote, that's part of the, what canvassers are told to do. Ask people if they're gonna vote. Get them to say yes. Because in fact, we have the science to show that if they say so, they are much more likely to do it, right? So there's something to this, right? Uh, swearing, there's something to that too, yeah? Uh, but what Jesus is saying is you don't need to utter a certain sequence of words in order to uh, be serious, in order to make your yes a yes or your no a no. Uh, just make up your mind and say what you're going to do and then do it, right? And telling the other people that you're going to do it, that's, the, that's every bit as good as swearing by anything. Swearing, so swear words, right? You're hearing swear words. You guys are hearing swear words all the time, right? Why do we call them swear words? It's weird, isn't it? It's like, so there's swearing on the Bible that you're, you know, like, I solemnly swear that I will do the duties of the President of the United States and uphold the United States Constitution, right? That's swearing. And then all, there's all these cuss words, right? And that's swearing. Does that add up? Or that, is that the same thing? Well, it turns out the cuss words came from the religious thing, or the, the swearing thing, right? So you, you would uh, swear by the Bible or by God that you would do something. Uh, you know, when people get married, just yesterday I did, I performed the wedding for uh, Leslie Kearney's granddaughter. Very sweet, Leslie is so happy. That's why she's not here today. She's too happy to come to church. Uh, celebrating, I'm sure, still today. It was very sweet. And, and this was a neat story because um, the couple made their vows to each other and the vows were hilarious. They were really funny. Have you ever, ever heard, you guys been to weddings? Yeah? Was anything funny in the wedding? <laughs> this wedding, totally. Very funny. Their vows were funny. But they were also very powerful. Yeah? They were powerful because you could tell they were serious about each other. Now, when people get married, they make all these promises, and then you know what? One third of marriages end in divorce, and then you're gonna go, well, what's up with that? Well, you know what? That doesn't make the vows invalid. It does not invalidate the vows at all. Because the vows are uh, talking about an eternity in the present, right? The forever of today and today and today, and the next today, and the next today, the next today. Your vows are only good, as good as you practice them every day, right? And then situations change for all sorts of good reasons sometimes. Things change, and then that relationship has to change, and that's the way it is. That doesn't make the vows invalid at all, right? They can still have their validity. So it's not like you're when people get married, they're not swearing on a stack of Bibles that things will never change. That's not the point. That's not the point at all. The swear words would 
This is how the evolution of swear words. So uh, there was a swear word. Nobody gets excited about it now. Have you ever heard the word zounds? Z-O-U-N-D-S? No. You might see it in a comic book someday, an old comic book, like uh, a Marvel comic book from 1965. Zounds! You know, when something exciting happens and somebody says, whoa, it's from Shakespeare. And where does the word zounds come from? People are, people are in, in taverns in Britain partying, drinking tankards of ale, and uh, they tell stories, yeah, in the tavern. And, uh, and, and somebody in the tavern tells a tall tale, tall because it's taller than real life, yes? They tell a tall tale, and at the end they said, by God's wounds, I swear it is so. God's wounds, the puncture wounds of Jesus on the cross, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that was a phrase that was used. So you swear that something is true by something holy and sacred, in this case, God's wounds. God's wounds, God's wounds, God's wounds, zounds. So God's wounds turns into zounds, which then becomes a swear word in Shakespeare. Yeah? So the bad words that we say as swear words um, very often have a religious origin. Crazy, huh? Well, now, now why, do we, okay, why do people say swear words? Can you explain this, you guys? Why do they use them at all? <laughs> Thank you, because they don't have a big vocabulary. Yes, their horizons are circumscribed when it comes to language. Yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? Yeah, that's probably a lot of it. But another thing is, what I notice is, people use swear words when they want to make a big deal about something, when they get excited, angry, or happy even. They want to emphasize what they're saying. So then they use a cuss word. When I use cuss words, that's what I'm doing. I probably use too many cuss words myself, swear words. But that's how, you know, so we say these things for emphasis. But you know what? What Jesus is saying here is he's saying, whatever you say, say it with emphasis, and then you don't need to use swear words. You don't need to swear. You need to just swear on a stack of Bibles. You don't need to swear at all, right? Everything you say, be serious about that. Even if it's funny, be serious about what's funny, right? Put it out there and, and, and make, it, um, make it stick, yeah? Make it so people will take you at your word, no matter what it is. Now, how do we get to that point of being serious about our words? Uh, there's a uh, neuroscientist at Stanford, Sapolsky, has written about um, the problem of free will. This is a whole other sermon. We won't talk about it now in any depth, but basically part of his argument that we don't have free will <laughs> is that there's neuroscience now that tells us that we make up our minds before we even know that we made them up. FMRI, functional magnetic resonance imagery, following the neurons in the brain and the neural pathways has determined that People make decisions and only later realize that they've made decisions. We, we know more than we can tell. All sorts of examples of this. Very interesting. Very interesting. So the trick for us, the challenge for us is to know our minds, to know whether or not we've made up our minds, <laughs> to, to be in touch with that deeper level of knowing and understanding and get clear. And that requires what we do right here in church, contemplation, meditation, knowing our minds, knowing our thoughts, looking at what we're thinking and feeling so that we can know our minds. And if we know our minds, then when we say yes, 
Finally, when we get to the point of saying yes, we mean yes. And when we get to the point of saying no, we say no, and we mean it, and we're serious, and we don't need to swear. Amen.